So when people first start working with survey data in Power BI, they often think that they need to handcraft a visual for every single question to get a count and a percentage of responses. And that's not true. So we can do a pretty quick and easy unpivot of that data and put it all into a matrix. And let me show you what it looks like real quick. Essentially, we have our questions in a matrix with the percentage, the count of responses, and then kind of a trend of how people responded over time. So back over here. So we're going to go through how to do that step by step. This is going to be using Microsoft Forms data. So we're going to connect to the responses for this where it lives in SharePoint so that we can schedule a refresh on it. And we're doing this in Power BI so that we can control the experience of the response reporting better because Power BI lets us do things like set row level security on it where managers see the items for the people that report to them and that kind of thing. So let's jump into how to do this. The first thing you want to do is is if you are using Microsoft Forms, you want to just double check your survey settings. So for example, if I go in here to the ellipses menu and then settings, I want to make sure that the who can fill out this form is set to what I want it to be. So if you are sending your survey to people internal to your organization, specify that here, only people in your tenant, uh, and then decide whether or not you want to track their names. So the name is also gonna come with their email address, which is very useful for pulling information about the user. So you can group your responses into say department or um, do a manager lookup, that kind of thing. So mine is an anonymous survey, so I'm just gonna swap it back to this. If I come back to the responses tab for the survey, it shows me that the results live in this Excel file. So if I open this, this lives in the document library that the Microsoft 365 group includes. So if I click on this, it'll open the SharePoint site that it lives in. So the first thing we need to do is download a copy of this file and we need to get the path where the file lives in SharePoint. So the easiest way, in my opinion, to connect to single files in SharePoint is to download a copy and then change the path to SharePoint. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go to the file tab here and then go to save as and download a copy. So you don't want to use the one in the export menu to export to CSV. You want to download a copy of the Excel file. And then we need to get the path for the file. So I'm gonna click on this little caret menu next to the file name up here that shows me where it is. And I'm just gonna click on the folder that it lives in. So that's this shared documents here. And that's gonna open up the library in SharePoint. And then I can see the file here. So in here, there's an ellipses menu next to the file. We're gonna click on that. And I'm not going to copy link. That's the wrong one. That's going to give you a generated ID link, which won't work for Power BI. We need to go in this little menu down here to details. And in details, towards the bottom, there is a path. So we're going to copy the path. So in Power BI, I'm going to import data from an Excel workbook. So we're going to select the file that we downloaded. So that's this one here. And we're going to select the table that the data is in, not the tab. So we want table one and then click on transform data. So I'm going to rename table one to submitted surveys. And then we want to change the path that this query is referencing. So right now it's looking for the file on our computer. We're going to change the path to SharePoint. And we did it this way so that we don't have to use the SharePoint folder connector because the SharePoint folder connector creates a bunch of extra baggage that's only really useful if you're combining multiple files. So I'm going to click on the source step here, and that's going to show the path that it's looking at right now. And all we're going to do is paste in the path that we copied earlier from SharePoint and then click OK. So it's going to think about that for a second, and then we need to log in. So we need to select the organizational account type, not anonymous, and then sign in. I changed my password the other day. <laughs> that's upset about. All right, and then connect. So now if I go back to the last step in the applied steps, all of our data should be there. So it's pointed at SharePoint now. We just need to clean up our data and shape it. So remove any columns that you don't need. So for me, that's the email and the name and the last modified time because we're not tracking those for this particular survey. So I'm just going to remove them. And then I'm going to just duplicate this completion time and change it into a completed date field. So I'm going to right click duplicate, I'm going to call it submitted date, and I'm going to change the type to date in the toolbar up here. So now what we have is rows of our submitted surveys with all of the data. And I'm going to leave this query like this because we want to still be able to do 
calculations on typed data. So like, for example, the survey rating column is a number column, and I want to be able to, say, get the average of that column. So I'm going to leave those columns as they are, and I'm going to duplicate this query. So right click and duplicate. And this one I'm going to call responses. And this is going to be the one that we unpivot. I'm going to remove these two timestamps because I'm not going to use them. And then we're going to do this hacky trick that I kind of like. So the, um, the questions in my form are both multiple choice and then there's a couple open-ended text questions at the end. And we need to treat those a little bit differently because we don't want the giant paragraphs of text to get dumped into our matrix with our counts and whatnot. It'll look really messy. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, create something that we can use to filter our rows on. And we're going to do that by just renaming our two text columns to um, add in kind of a naming convention around what kind of column type it is. So I'm just going to do a double hyphen and then the word text. And I'm going to do the same thing for this one. Okay, onto the magic part. We're going to select the columns that are not responses. So that's the submitted date and the ID column. And then I'm going to right click on the header for ID and click on unpivot other columns. So what that does is it drops all of our questions into a column and all of our responses into a second column. And then we can use that in our matrix. And I'm going to take this text value that we dropped in here and I'm going to split this off. So this is going to become our question type column. So you could have labeled all of the questions if you wanted to with which type they were if you wanted to handle them differently in your report. But I'm just going to and do it for the text. So we're going to right click on the column and then go to split column by delimiter. And then we're going to split on that double hyphen. I use two hyphens because one of my questions has a hyphen in it and I didn't want it to split the question itself. So now we can rename these. So I'm going to rename this one question, this one question type, and this one to response. So this question type column, we're going to use as a filter in our report. So I'm going to close and apply that. All right, so let's add a matrix. That's this cube one with the blue sides to it. So it's kind of like a pivot table from Excel, if you're familiar with those. So if we open up our responses table, we can add in our questions as rows. And then we're going to create a measure for the count and the percentage. So this should be pretty fast. I'm just going to click on under table tools, new measure. And it's just going to be count rows responses. That's an easy one. And then we're going to make one more that is percent of total. So this one I'm going to be fancy and use variables. So we're going to do var responses equals, and then we're going to feed it the measure we just created. This one here. And we're going to do one more var all responses. And this one we're going to do calculate because we're going to use filters on it and we're going to give it the same measure, this one here, and then we're going to do a comma and we're going to remove the filters on it. So that's going to be using all, so all responses. And then we're going to add in our filters again. So we want to apply the question level filtering. So we want the total to be not the total of all responses ever submitted for all questions. We want it only to be for the current question. So we're going to say question. So that's the question column in our unpivot is equal to the selected value of the question. So this will be whatever is that row for that question in the matrix. That's the filter that's going to be applied. And then close the brackets. And then for our return, we're going to return divide. So we're going to divide the responses by all responses. So you could have done this without variables if you want to. It's just that I feel like the DAX is easier to read if you're dividing one thing by another thing versus dividing two calculations. <laughs> okay, so responses is a table name. I can't use that as my variable name. So I'm gonna call this count responses like that and then replace the reference here. My bad. And let's make sure the format is right. So the format is general by default. Let's change that to percentage because this is a percentage measure and I'm gonna set the decimals to zero. All right, so let's drop our response column into our rows too so that we have the response values in there and close this. 
and then um, click on this expand all one level down in the hierarchy button. So that's going to expand everything. So first thing you'll notice is that all of our text questions are in here. We want to take those out and display those separately. So I'm going to drag this onto filters on this visual and then select all and then remove the text values. So the text questions have been removed and now we need to add in our measures. So the measures are going to go into the values well down here. So there's our percent of total and our count. And I like to remove the totals from here because I don't feel like they add value. So I'm gonna to go to the format, your visual, and turn those off. So now we can add some conditional formatting to these. So we want a data bar for the percent of total. So to do that, we just go back over here to the percent of total field, click on the little carrot next to it, go to conditional formatting and data bars. And I'm gonna set the minimum to zero and the maximum to one. So one is 100%. And then for the positive bar, set the color and click OK. If you have a percentage that's going to be very large, you probably want to use a lighter color for the conditional formatting bars so that they, when they overlap, you can still read the text. So we've got our count and our percentage. I'm going to do a little bit of minor styling on this matrix to make it look a little better. So the alternating bar colors, they usually tone that down a little bit. So then values and then this one here. And then I make the headers semi-bold. And then we can add our spark lines. So that's going to tell us how responses are trending over time. Obviously, this is something you would probably do for long-running surveys rather than short-duration surveys. But to do that, we just go to our responses column here and click the little carrot next to it and then click on add spark line and then select that date field make sure to select the one in the responses table although i think it auto created a relationship on this so we should be good either way um it's date field and then make it smaller because by default it looks really weird so we're going to rename this to something shorter back to the reason why we have two tables created so we have our submitted surveys and that's going to be the rows of the actual records of the person submitting the form and then we have our responses so the submitted surveys has typed data so the columns that we have in here there's one that's a number column so we could get the average of that as a measure and we can also get the total count as a measure so we can go ahead and add the new card visual and we can drop in a count of the survey IDs here if we want to, or we could create a distinct measure for this either way. So we got a count. I'm going to rename this to. And then for our kind of our CSAT score, so this is the rating field, we can do an average of that field. So I can do new measure and just do average of the rating field. So this is gonna give us a raw number, so 3.55. If you're saying to yourself like, well, what does that mean, 3.55 out of what? You can concatenate on here what it's out of if you want to. So to do that, what happens is if you add to your measure an and, and then some text like out of five, by default, it's going to dump in all of the decimal places for this, so we're going to need to round it. So it looks like you can't even see it because it's off the page. So we're going to put a round around this average. So round this number to be maybe one decimal place. I don't know. And now it looks a little bit more reasonable. So 3.5 out of 5. And we can style these cards real quick. Um, I like to take the border off. All right, so at this point, we have those text questions. Um, as far as how you wanna display those, it really kind of depends on how you wanna see them. So we could do the same thing we did with this matrix and drop them into a visual with a question. So that would be question and response. We just tick those, oops, that went in the wrong place. We need to go into rows. So if you expand these, and then we can add the question type filter, but have it be in the reverse direction. So we could make this one 
only show the text responses. So now we can scroll through and read these. We can drop the submitted date into values and it's gonna try and summarize it. So it's gonna be earliest, but each of these only has one date. So the earliest doesn't really apply. We can just change the name of this to submitted date and then obviously style the table a little bit different. I would turn off the tonals again too. Another thing you could do with this is a word cloud. So if we take just the text questions, because remember we have that column now, so we can filter on that. So if we duplicate the query for our responses, filter it on that type column, and then split into new rows on the space character, we can use the, um, there's a Microsoft custom visual for a word cloud that's free. So we could do that. Um, maybe I'll do another video on that someday. So that's our easy way of putting all of our survey data into one visual in Power BI. Thank you for watching.